Lord, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, 
and the flesh had come upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesize, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, we are cut off completely. <coughs> Therefore prophesize, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves, and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Here is the reading. Thanks be to God. The next reading is from the psalm, and we will read it by alternate verses. Out of the depths that I have called you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to know what is done in this, O Lord, you would stand. For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, or then, more than the watchmen for the morning. O Israel, He shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death. To set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of its righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. God. Son of God may be glorified through it. 
Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. <laughs> Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up and quickly go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Lord, make me your instrument. Play on me. Please be seated. In today's gospel, when Martha comes to Jesus, Martha says, Lord, if you had been here, you could have healed my brother. And Jesus says, he will live again. And she says, well, I, I know he'll live again in the resurrection on the last day. Martha has a resurrection mentality. Which the other three Gospels tell us is the right attitude to have towards the story of Jesus and salvation. That Jesus will come again, he will judge the living and the dead, and he will be saved at that point. But John's Gospel makes a differentiation. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And this actually puzzled many people over the centuries. In fact, some translators, when they were transcribing the Bible, thought that this must be a transcription error that Jesus said, and the life. And so they leave it out. If you read some Bibles, at this point, Jesus just says, I am the resurrection. The and the life part is missing. It seemed redundant. Why would he bother to say that? It's the same thing, right? But there have been scholars over the years who have thought that there might be another reason John did this. Another reason why Jesus would say, and the life there. And our folks who put together the lectionary, obviously agree with this interpretation because they give us this reading from Ezekiel. And in this reading from Ezekiel, what happens? We have dead bodies, dry bones, and God talks to Ezekiel and says, prophesy to the bones, and then he says, prophesy to the breath, and life is breathed. You see, in, in the Jewish scriptures, God, as the breath of life, the Holy Spirit, in fact, is the breath of life. And we see it as early as Genesis. In the creation story, God breathes over the deep and it is filled with life. It's the breath of God that creates life. And in the Psalms, we hear this over and over again as well. There's so many Psalms about drowning and about breath not being in your, your body and then God's breath being breathed into you and you come back to life and all of your problems are solved. By saying, I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus is associating himself with that breath of life over the deep, with that breath of life in Ezekiel that breathes life into the dry bones. Now, fortunately, we know from Ezekiel what that passage means. God was nice enough to give us the explanation right there in the prophecy. We know that that old imagery is about the people of Israel and their faith is so dried up that they feel dead. They feel no connection at all to God. They're dead. And God says, well, I can fix that. I can bring you back up out of your graves. I can breathe my breath into you and give you new life. Nothing is so dead that I cannot bring you back to life. And Jesus, by saying, I am the resurrection and the life, and then calling out to Lazarus, literally bringing him back to life, just as those bones in Ezekiel. And we see that 
He is at one with the Holy Spirit. He is at one with God the Father and Creator. Another interesting detail of today's Gospel is that Lazarus has been dead for four days. This is important because the Jews believe that after three days, the soul left the body. Lazarus is not just dead, he is dead dead. <laughs> Super dead. <laughs> the soul is gone. It's just a body. And so when Jesus calls out to Lazarus, when Lazarus hears God's voice and comes back to life, Jesus is doing something beyond the pale. He is bringing something back to life which was dead dead. The spirit was gone from that body and here it is again walking. And that's a very important idea. It's again the same idea from Ezekiel that nothing is so dead that God cannot bring it back to life. And reading this story, I can't help but think of myself and think of my own falling away from the church. I fell away from the church for about 20 years, and I felt dead dead. Even after I'd come back to church, I didn't feel like I truly belonged. I felt like I'm here, but I'm not, I don't belong here. I'm not like these people. I'm not alive with the Lord. And it wasn't until a certain scripture was read, not making separation from the love of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit moved in me. And all of a sudden I felt alive. This idea that nothing <coughs> is so dead that God cannot bring it to life again is the message of hope. No matter how far we fall away from faith from God, from our own connection to God, we can never be so far that God cannot bring us to life again. You may have heard the Lauren Nagel song about this passage from Ezekiel, Come Alive. Lauren Daigle's a Christian singer. She's the daughter of a pastor. And so she had done a, a kind of a deep Bible study on this passage from Ezekiel. And her conclusion was that this isn't just about Israel. This is about all of the people of God. And those of us who are in the church who feel the life of God, we are called to be Ezekiel. We are called to call out to the dry bones, come alive. And I think she's right. I think that's a good read of this passage. I think we are called to remind others that nothing is so dead that it cannot be alive again in Christ. Please join me in affirming our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
and grant that she may finally dwell with thee in life everlasting through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, if y'all could help me bless these, we have a prayer shawl and one of our first farm mats for Jim Hope. So, again, hands, please. Thank you. Heavenly Father, please bless these gifts from the hands of your servants, this prayer shawl and this mat. We pray that the people who receive them will know that they are loved. That the people of our community are praying for them, and that you are with them wherever they go. In your Son Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to His name. Bring offerings and come in His work. Please join us in singing your five twelve.
your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us in the covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Bishop Reddle, Vicar Sean Rutledge, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember those who are daily in our prayers. Owen, Mike, Mary Jane, Teresa, Kelly, Rosa, Rakesh, Modu, Hunter, Ron, Ray, Kara, Frank, Miriam, Diane and her family, and Jean. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone, including Walt Sellers, Frank Donaldson, Willie Welch, Houston McGee, Alvin Smith, Andy, Virgil Cannon, Mary Albert, Lou Myrick, Robert Fogel, and Sherry Roberts, and bring them into the place of eternal joy and life. And grant that we may find our inheritance with St. Peter and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Our recession hymn is 547. Uh.